think the worst thing that can ever happen to a creative person is to get too comfortable and that is when you start to get complacent in your work and it doesn't matter if you're a musician, an artist or a filmmaker or anything, you know, if you have the same thing for breakfast every day, <laughs> you know, it, it gets rather boring. He would be the first to admit he's more, he's very, he's a very good um, conceptual artist and he knows he knows the lay of the land and the big picture. I think where he relies or leans on on me, for example, with with lyrics or melody. It was like an encyclopedia of like musical knowledge. So he just you know he he knows his stuff really really well. He knows how to pull from different influences, and he's not only not afraid to try new things. I think he actively pushes himself to try new things, which puts him in an elevated category, in my opinion. Anytime Michael and I got together, he would kind of be, you know, we'd, we'd be kind of bantering back and forth about the sound of the record. I remember when we talked about the sound of introspect, we did this, had a similar conversation at Odyssey. It was like the sound he was going for, how he want, you know, and how it was a natural progression of just even where he was going and changing as an artist and, and evolving his sound. Because what he is doing isn't trying to recreate something that another artist in the scene has done. He really is envisioning his music early on and accomplishing those goals uh, and really committing to them. I don't think he ever has a moment where he says, well, this doesn't sound like X, Y, or Z artist. He is committing to what he believes to be the real expression of himself. He really pulls all these unique things out of his magical music box, is what I like to call it. Uh, you know, like Glasgow song. I mean, a synth wave, 80s kind of pop song with bagpipes. Like, who would have thought to do that? With Odyssey, I took a little bit longer, like time away from, from writing, so that when I came back to it, my mindset was, okay, what can I do this time that's gonna really push the boundaries, I guess, of, you know, synth wave as a genre. It can be quite limiting in terms of expectations and, genre limitations but that's only until someone pushes those boundaries and I love those kind of singer-songwriter records like George Michael, Sting, Phil Collins, Peter Gabriel and every song feels like it's different but the whole collection of songs feels like it's from the same family. Odyssey for me was about pushing into a much more cohesive singer-songwriter record. Collaboration was an integral part of the making of Odyssey. No man is an island, and I don't think that you can completely do anything that you want to do all by yourself. It takes a team of people that work with you. You play on their strengths, and through that collaboration, you come up with something far greater, with more depth, more facets, and more meaning. And so I, I, I pulled in a cast of superstars <laughs> To, to help me work on Odyssey. He again like uh, texted me and was like, hey, like I'm thinking about bringing some people on for the first time to like work on my original music with me. Cause he, like me, has always pretty much just been, you know, self-sufficient doing everything himself. But I think he wanted to experiment doing an album with, you know, multiple collaborators and he asked me to be a part of it and you know sent me a few demos and asked if i could put anything on them or if, if i thought i could and i was like took a listen and it was just like immediately like yeah this is easy like this is like definitely in my ballpark with odyssey he sort of held his hands up early on and um and said look i want you to be more involved in the the actual sewing this together as far as lyrics and, and melody are concerned but he had the whole concept in place which is really in, it's really interesting to for me to sort of get involved in that as a songwriter because never underestimate the vibe guy and and the person who has the concept and and starting something and getting your foot on the ladder is the hardest thing to do 
Like he'll kind of guide you through what he's going for. He'll tell you, like a good director, a movie director, will sort of, I guess, describe the vision, but they'll never line read to you. They'll never, never tell you how to act a part. They want it to come from within, from you. With Odyssey, I think there's a certain maturity that's on this record with the with the sort of subject matter that it's more prevalent than on my previous work because the things that I'm talking about are things which up until now I'd struggled with but now I've come to terms with and I've been able to rectify those things within myself and I feel like I'm at a place where I'm ready to move on and I'm happy where I'm at in my life. So Odyssey is a lot about coming to terms with and letting go of things which up until now I had struggled with. On one hand I could tell you that is there anybody out there is a song about, you know, being in my teenage years, taking drugs and getting lost in all of that. But then on the other hand I can tell you that it's a story about feeling like a stranger and not feeling like I had people there that I could connect with that understood me. And, but obviously the more important part of the story is the looking for connection part because I think we all are looking for connection and we want to be surrounded by people that understand us and that we understand them and without that we don't know our place in this world I, I feel. I found myself with some free time and I contacted Michael and said how are you getting on, what are you doing? And he said, oh, I've just made a new song. And he sent me, is there anybody out there? And straight away when I heard it, I thought, that's brilliant. That's absolutely brilliant. And I thought, I can do something with that because I know what to do with that. Michael had produced it like a 90s dance record meets a modern deep house record with a, part, a bit of 80s in it. But I wanted to go full on 80s, but make it modern. Working with John Campbell was like a, a childhood dream of mine. Not many people know this, but the, the first cassette tape that I bought was the Time Frequency, which is John Campbell's his, his band. So, for like, imagine if I was that age and someone said to me, "Michael, see when you're all grown up, you'll get to work with this person." So I used lots of reverse reverb effects. I used lots of reverse sounds because the whole song is like a love letter to the '90s, and. I said, I'm going to do a mix for you. And uh, I think he was a bit skeptical at first. <laughs> I don't know what he thought I was going to give him, but I took about two months on it. I really took my time. So I wanted it to be like an epic Trevor Horn-esque synthwave track. And um, I sent it to him. And he came back to me after a few days and said, John, that mix is incredible. And he said, I can only really see that as the radio edit. And I was like, cool, man, cool. Babylon in particular, it's about feeling like you're at home, like you've come home and you fell into your place and everything feels right. It's more about meeting somebody and it's a kind of, uh-oh, my life's about to change. You know, it's got that sort of undertone to it. So once I finished Is There Anybody Out There, Michael started to send me some stuff from his album. And I was painting my flat at the time and I had his album on and I just thought, okay, it'll be like a good quality synthwave album. But it's better than that, I think. I think that tracks like Babylon and Glasgow Song, they're extreme quality. They're very, if you look at the artistic development from Rabbit in the Headlights up to Babylon, he's really matured as a writer and I think that comes across, particularly in lyrical content. He's, he's you know, He's definitely feeling his oats and his onions at the same time, you know, and it's a pleasure to see. When I go back to making something new, my mind is completely empty and I start to feel kind of anxious about it because I feel like I've pulled the wool from under me, like I've pulled the carpet from under me and I don't really know what I'm doing. And through that process of starting again, not really knowing what I'm doing, it, it becomes fun again because then you're like, oh, this is going to be a challenge. If it's not challenging, you're probably going to repeat old ground and it's probably going to be a watered down version of what you've done before. It's never really been about what is such and such doing. It's like, this is a concept. How can we articulate this in an interesting and a dynamic and a colourful way? 
with the, the tropes that are going to satisfy diehard fans of a, of a particular aspect of a sound or sort of move forward with, in, in the knowledge and, and, uh, and with a comfortability and employing lack of self-consciousness. But I think he's, uh, he's one of the, the best artists to come out of Scotland and he's probably Scotland's most unknown, he's like Scotland's best kept secret.